G'day, uh, Glenn here from Kiwi Bees. Um, finally got my butt around to making a video on the oxalic acid strips that we make. Um, we use stuff called Overboard. Um, it's a compressed cardboard. It is not organic. It is recycled cardboard, so egg crates, the like. So just to put that in perspective, it's cardboard, you make your decisions on that. Um, but we're just going to give you a quick rundown on the making of the strips and what we use. We use, we're in New Zealand, so we use stuff from Pure Natural. And it is vegetable based glycerin. I think that is important. This is my own personal view. But we don't want to have animal products in there. The stuff that we can get from farmlands and the likes may or may not have tallow in the glycerol. Um, they can't actually tell you. Um, the strips here are loosely packed in because you'll see later on when we make them, they double in size. Um, we buy our salic acid in bulk, so we get it in 25 kilo sacks. In New Zealand you can buy smaller amounts from Ecrotech, um, large amounts from New Zealand Beeswax, uh, Clark's cleaning products in the North Island sell them, but NZ Beeswax is good for price. The glycerol, like I said, come from Nice and Natural, and that's pretty much it. The Overboard, they do have another product that is more sawdust and wood pulp based. I have used it, I've still got that in trial. We should say that this is all experimental, so you play with this stuff at your own risk. Um, the way I do this is for the Overboard. There's another um, guy in the North Island that uses uh, jib board. And he has worked out how it works for him. So if you're going to use jib board strips, you use what he says. Um, this is just what works for us. I was using 3 to 7 um, last year, and that works really fine for us. But I believe because we are root, we've always had a low varroa count. Um, on some test ties we've done with people with synthetics, and the spring, the strips weren't, they still had good mite fall, but they weren't as effective as they should be. So we've upped the ratio to four to, to three, uh, six. So I kept it real simple, um, rather than trying to do weights, scales, everything else. So if you're making one or two, use a smaller version of this. If you're going to make lots, use a big one. It's not exactly rocket surgery, is it, Jack? So, one, two, three, four. Don't eat this stuff, it ain't good for you. But the actual amount of oxalic acid, although it looks like a huge amount in there, goes into a lot of strips. So the amount you actually use per hive is a lot less than what you use when you're, say, vaporising it. Vegetable based glycerin, are you a bit goopy or try not to make a mess on one's floor? You're going to count for me so I don't forget? Wow. I could have had all this measured out ahead of time, but it sort of gives you an idea of how easy it is to make. I don't use water. Randy Oliver, if you look up scientific beekeeping, um, some of his brews is used water. Uh, we find that with the gentle heat and the lower concentration of oxalic acid, we get a good dissolved liquid. Um, Randy's latest findings, I believe, is he recommends 60% oxalic. Sorry, 40% oxalic to glycerol ratio by weight. 
Um, this is a wee bit weaker, but like I say, the overboard strips are very much like the Lewin cap, which we got to trial a few years ago. It seems to hold a lot more liquid than the jib board and the likes of other things, so slightly more liquid, less, less strength than the acid. This is how I'd recommend for people to make it themselves rather than how I was doing it with the three. I still use three parts of Osalic to seven of glycerol, but that's for our hives and we monitor them quite regularly. Um, decap drone, drone, brood, um, to make sure we don't have any mites. But anyway, enough gas bagging. I normally have a cup of coffee by this stage. This goes on there. We'll get it going. Now, it's really important to stress don't use mum's best pot, don't use mum's best stirrer. And do not use aluminium because the, al the salic acid will react with the aluminium in the pot. Uh, do not boil this. You'll end up with vapor or sublimation of the salic, which would not be good. I do do it inside, as you can guess, we've got a wood stove. At a demonstration for a bee club, we did it on the back of the ute um, with a little gas cooker and did a smaller batch for them. So, using just the four parts to six ratio, you can scale it up and down. Um, weighing the acelic out is a bit iffy because acelic is very hydroscopic, so it will absorb water, so your weights will vary. Um, I have done trials with stronger mixes of osalic, like 50% osalic to glycerol by weight. Um, that uh, destroyed, uh, made the hives a lot weaker. Um, we had no varroa, but it knocked the hives over a lot. This here, you put this in, and the hives, you go back two to three weeks later, and you know, the hives look really good. Um, one thing we've found compared to, we used to vaporize, we've used uh, Mite Away Quick Strips, um, time based products. One thing we've found with this is the age of the worker bee and the fact that we have a lot more older bees in our hives, especially coming through the spring, um, means that we're getting a higher survival rate. So it means that, you know, have a play with this, make sure it works, um, try it. Well, our synthetic strips are still working. Um, now if we pause the video now, we'll come back to this when it's ready. You don't have a pause button, so you have to do that. 